so that is the principle of substitution. It's based on the fact that one property will substitute for another. Got it? Now, the second way the appraiser can gain value is under what they call the cost approach. The cost approach is based on the fact of, I am going to use the cost to build a property of another property and use it as the basis for the value of my home, all right? So, bang. <laughs> Now, the first thing we need to understand with the cost approach is the cost approach only deals with the structure. You have to subtract the value of the land out of the equation. And if you look at our tax parcel or our tax property card, it will give you a value of the structure and the value of the land and then the total we are only going to be talking about the cost of the structure itself. That's the very first and most important part in the cost approach, is that you have to take the value of the land out of the equation, and you literally would just subtract it out. If the house is valued at 300 grand or 350, and the land's worth 50, then the structure is worth 300,000. That is what we are going to talk about. Now, when you're bit, so you're using this cost, there are three ways to determine the cost. Now, I have put them on your notes on screen. Your book has failed to mention these. However, your test does not fail to mention them. So make sure that you capture these three concepts so we can talk about them. And the first method is called the square foot method that we are going to talk about. It is a very simplistic way of looking at a property. Once again, there is my top view of the house. That is not an envelope. That's a top view of the house. You're looking right down in on it, all right? If the house I'm using was valued at 150 or sold for 150 and it was 1500 square feet and I'm going to build a 2000 square foot house, what would be the value of my house? Well, using the square foot method, you would find out that this house is $100 per square foot, right? 150,000 divided by 1,500 gives you $100 per square foot. So if I use that to determine a 2,000 square foot house, I get a value of $200,000. Very simple. It is looking at the house as one big unit and dividing it into equal square footage. And then I'm using that number to multiply the one I'm trying to find the value of times its square footage, and I get a value based on the cost. Thumbs up. What is the assumption that you're making when using a square foot house? Uh, the square foot method. There is one major assumption between these two houses that you have to know. What is it? What is the assumption I'm making between these two? It's a single, I was going to say it's a single story house. Not necessarily single story. I mean, I can use the square footage of a double story. It doesn't matter. Right. Or a split level. But what is the assumption between the two? Think about the $100 a square foot. If I use that number on the second house, 
what is the relationship between the first and the second house? What is my assumption? Same Sarah's age. chiming in. Sarah? That they're close together. You mean location-wise? Yeah, location-wise, close together. That they're maybe, in the same area. Maybe not. And maybe this is a harder question than I'm making it, because I'll give Cameron another shot. One more time, dude. I actually just kind of say the same thing. I was just going to say, like, it's going to, like, the house are in the same area, so you're kind of, like, basing the, the square footage off the other house. Right. You guys are really close. It's the same house. Right? Like a production builder. That's how I got $100 a square foot. When Davis builds a home, do you think he builds one home? No. He builds 50 of them. So he bought 50 sets of air conditioners. He bought 12 miles of wire. He bought 300 tons of stone. So he can use the exact same material on every house in his housing edition. That's how I got that $100 a square foot because it used mowing faucets and train air conditioners and you know it's the same floor plan and yada 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 so the second house hey dude it's still using mowing faucets and train air conditioners so i can use the hundred dollars a square foot because it's the same house it's a cookie cutter vinyl village what we call production home that's very easy for you guys to do this math on the back of an envelope so that you can say oh well the house in the uh, front costs this, therefore the house in the back costs this. That's the square foot method. It typically is done for production homes. Now, let's say that doesn't work. We actually have a second way of doing it. It's called the unit in place method. The unit in place. Still the same home, but here's the difference. Now, instead of the house looking uh, as one unit, we're going to come up with any number of units, one to 20, let's say. And in this one, we're going to look at the air conditioning unit. Well, this air conditioning unit's the same one, so there's no price change. Well, then we're going to look at, you know, the flooring unit. And we're gonna look at the flooring unit over here. Well, this house is better by $5,000. So we add 5,000. When you get to the bottom, you just add all these units up and go, oh, well, it's plus $10,000 better. So based on the fact it was 200, but we actually see it's $10,000 better. So now it's, I don't know what the heck's going on, 210,000. Because we looked, instead of it looking at it as a house, we looked at it as a bunch of units and then compared the units together, right? That's called the unit in place. And those units can be defined by anybody. Just how you want to do it. The landscaping, the roofing, the cement, the flooring, all that kind of stuff. You would just make sure however you broke it down in one, you would break it down in the other. So you're comparing the same units. And you're looking at just the unit in place method. Right? These would be like semi-custom homes or you're using a Davis home to determine a Dura home. Very similar, but slightly different in amenities. That would be a good commonplace. Now the third method is called the quantity survey. The quantity survey method. In the quantity survey method, we are looking at everything. You need the blueprints 
to do a quantity survey method. Now, what happens instead of looking at the flooring unit, you may say, well, the flooring unit is actually made up of carpet, uh, subfloor, padding, tacking strips, all kinds of stuff. You are looking at everything. And then you say, oh, well, Michael Duke's home used 2,000 two by fours. This one's going to use 2,100 two by fours. So we got to bring the value up. That home used 13 tons of cement. Our home used 15 tons of cement. This is no longer a $450 appraisal. This is a $5,000 appraisal and takes an appraiser maybe two, three weeks to do because what he will do is lay the blueprints out over here and these blueprints and go, oh yeah, oh yeah, all right? This is typically what happens with new construction homes. We talked about this earlier, that construction loan, we said does not have an asset to protect it. And he would use the plans to generate a value. This is the unit in place method. I am looking at the screen and I see eight or nine deer in the headlights. All right. What I'm trying to say is the square foot method. Imagine you're in an airplane and you fly over and you see a house. Oh, that's one little house. That would be the square foot method. Now you zoom in on that house and realize that house is made of 20 different units, the flooring unit, the landscaping unit, the, uh, and you break it into its units. And then you zoom really close to that house and you see that that flooring unit is actually made of a quantity of different stuff. You got the carpet, the subfloor, the padding, the tacking strips, the glue, the nail, everything that would go into that unit. This would be custom homes. You know, there is no other Gernak home around, but we could use a Ron Wampler home and pull his plans and use them as the basis for this home because we know the value of that and had 2,000 two by fours, this one's got 2,100. So what do you do like, um, so like for instance, my in-laws live like out in the middle of nowhere and there's like some houses that are like near them, um, but they're like, I mean, their houses, they built their house and it's 4,000 square feet versus like the neighbor um, built theirs, I don't know how long before that, and theirs is only 2,000 square feet. And like, you know, how, how do you judge theirs when there's nothing else close to it that even compares to it? That's why this is an art. <laughs> you will get this. Those are called white elephant properties. And that happens all the time. And in the country, I heard you say one thing I want to make sure. In the country, you may go five miles. You may go 10 miles. If the property is sufficiently unique enough, it may warrant the entire state of Indiana. All right? It Once again, this is why it's an art. If you are asked to list Conseco's home when it went up for sale, how many houses have 17 bedrooms in it? There may not be another one within 50 miles. So when you start getting into properties that we call the white elephant, yes, difficulties arise. And you may go with a different method 
because you were talking about the substitution method. Maybe we go with the cost method because we use that 2000 square foot house and say, well, it costs 20 grand to build, make up a number, but it's got X amount of two by fours. This one's got four times that. So I would multiply that number by four. This one's got three squares or shingles. This one's got four times that. So you may not use the substitution method if it's sufficiently unique enough. You may go to one of these others and use that house that was built 10 years ago, that's 2,000 square feet, and now you've got to manipulate, but you need the blueprints because you're going to do the quantity survey method and realize that 10 years ago, and we're going to talk about this thing called depreciation here in just a second, because in a house that was built 10 years ago, we may have to depreciate it and figure out what that cost would be today. So that's a very good point that you will run into that there are sufficiently unique properties called white elephants that you may have to, you know, five miles, 10 miles. Oh, there's one in Richmond. They actually, there was a commercial brokerage for fun, comped the White House. How many houses in the United States have more than 50 bedrooms? They use the entire United States as the comping area because they had to come up with a number of houses that had over 50 bedrooms. And there was like five that they found. Mm. So yeah, you're going to get into that. Hopefully it's not your first one you do. 